going to do a little round again. So anybody who just tuned in, just introduce yourselves one more time. Porsche Z. <laughs> Rock and Ray. Chris Albany. Johnny Z. Dave DePetra. And uh, thank you guys again so much for coming up. This is all about the Rock and Roll Heaven Old Bridge Metal Militia show to put together for uh, Sandy uh, victims. It's going to be May 11th. And what you guys are trying to do here is just bring back the old times, right? <laughs> That's kind of what it's, what it's about. You want to get that vibe, you know. Well, you know, metal had a certain here. feeling, had a, had a certain something about it back in the early 80s. It was certain freshness. It was uh, sort of waking up our senses in places that our senses haven't been. You know, it was, uh, <laughs> you know. So, uh, no, that was uh, what it was like. It was just good old times. Everybody coming out with their air guitars and Ray talking right about Right on. It. You know, it was about uh, a camaraderie of, of, of people that lived for metal. I mean, we, we dressed it. Everybody had the long hair to... As soon as Priest came out with, with, with Hell Bent for Leather, it was like the leather thing was happening all over the place. It just broke loose wild in the 70s and into the 80s. Are you going to break out your leather jacket for the 11th? I was looking for my cut-off sleeve <laughs> denim one, but I, I couldn't find it in the patches. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been cool, though, but I'm sure there's going to be some guys that's going to have it. I don't even know if it will fit half the guys. I didn't want to be asked with you. Mine will fit. What, what a time it was, you know, and, and and to have you know these bands together and everybody's going to be together. Just we're, we're just so excited. Me and all the guys from the militia were just really excited about this. And and the, the scene was Johnny started off with just a little mom and pop record store, you know, over at the 18 Market on on Route 18 East Brunswick, and it just the word got out. There would be people come from the city. One thing about them, when it was a new album out, I remember going, there was times before Johnny opened up, I'd go all the way to Bleaker Bob's in the village to get a new record. Yeah. Uh, because the, it was underground, imports, you know, I would do all my shopping at Jackson Red Bank. It, it was just all, you would do whatever it took to get a record, even though times have changed now where people are just downloading songs. And, and it, it's, a lot of people are not even using instruments, so we got to keep the metal and the music alive, you know. I go to a rec uh, the guitar center and some of the guys said less kids are buying instruments now because yeah. there's a lot more tape stuff and dance music and yeah. got to keep the rock happening. When Ray walked into Rock and Roll Heaven, Marsh and I looked at each other and said, big sale coming. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, and I read this Ray week. used to come in there with a few of his guys, few of, few, few of his guys and they just fill up their arms with, with records, man, at 10, 12 bucks a clip, man. It's been like $200 and say, we'll see ya. Like, they we're not going to go off and just listen yeah, to them and go crazy. And, and, the, and the better the album, the longer the party. And sometimes they last for three days. Yeah. <laughs> if you survive the party at Dills or Joe's, man... God bless you. You are a strong man. Yeah, I just want to tell you, what we had set up was a PA that would go up to the ceiling, and it got so bare where we had to uh, pull the mattresses off the beds in the rooms and put them on the walls behind it just so the house next door wouldn't call the police on us. And also, I would have the turntable would shake, so I would have it hanging from the ceiling on chains. That's right, your turntable's hanging on chains. I thought that was Insane. like a metal thing. You're now my wife, my, up to today, my wife's saying, will you please go for a hearing aid? <laughs> <laughs> it actually worked? It didn't, like, mess up the no, play? No, no, it was a... That's awesome. Really yeah. Thousands of watts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ray does like it loud. We went to a show together. And I go to pull out some earplugs and put them in, and Ray turns around and slaps my hands and says, what are you doing? I'm like, what yeah. do you mean? He goes, we don't do earplugs. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do earplugs. Huh. We never play like that, and we never will. <laughs> Ray's like, y you're militia. You don't wear earplugs. <laughs> and I didn't wear earplugs. As a matter of fact, I don't wear them anymore. <laughs> Too metal for that? Yes. <laughs> well, I want to cool. talk a little bit right. about the upcoming of all these bands. Let's start with Anvil. So you remember, you know, them starting off? And well, like, Anvil... You know, we uh, were playing their record at the Rock and Roll Heaven record store, and we had to do immigration and all kinds of stuff in the old days to get them over here. It was really crazy and very, very expensive, but we didn't know any better, and mm -hmm. we wanted to bring them over because that's what we wanted to do. And I remember Anvil, pull, I didn't know how to give directions to my house from Route 18 across the street from the flea market, so I remember 6 o'clock in the morning, they pulled in, they called the house, or 5 o'clock in the morning, and I went up there, there was about five cars that had to go tell them how to get to our house. Like, everybody pulls up to meet Anvil, and as soon as they got to our house, it was a party. That's 
always a party. It was always a party. I mean, we would just sit up. Nobody ever slept for days. I don't think. And it's funny because the first day he did bring him to his house, he gave him to me for them to, to stay at my place. And that night, I took them all down to Fountain Casino to see Twisted Sisters. So it's funny the way this goes. Yeah. That was 1982. Like they made they yep. made lips. Check his leather jacket. That's right. right. In those it's days, he couldn't wear his leather jacket with chains. Really? Oh boy. So the, how did uh, how'd you get around that then? Couldn't wear your leather. It took no, a it while. wasn't Ray. It was it was uh, lips from Andrew. Oh, oh. Yeah, back then everybody would wear bullet belts, uh, spike wristbands. It was the wearers you would have before you go to a show. <laughs> now you're walking like that. You look like a freak. <laughs> we could check our wristbands at uh. At Sports Night, when yeah. Metallica and Raven played. It's either you were a poser, dressed like a woman, or you had the spikes and the chains. And you know, all. at the Halloween Headbanger Ball, there was this one fight where a guy came up to me and said to me, I just got hit in the face. And I said, oh, my God. He had all these spike marks in his face. He had little oh, holes wow. in his face. It was unbelievable. I said, this is really horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Like well, there were no fights. I mean, everybody was peaceful. They went to see the music. And then if there was a fight, Ray got behind him and choked him to death anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have any other stories, like, reminiscent about, you know, maybe seeing one of these bands in the 80s or something? Well, we've seen them all yeah. many, many a times. Do you have any um, stories that... I used to out. sneak in through the kitchen at the Fountain Casino to see Twisted Sister because <laughs> I wasn't old enough to get in. You didn't get caught? No. Nah. Look at you. Friend's brother worked in the kitchen. Oh, so that's why you didn't get caught. Yeah. <laughs> that's always good stuff. I could tell you a cute Amble on stage story. Marsh and I always played records that had little skips in them or had some problems in them mm. at the store because we just we took one of everything. And sometimes if there was a scratch, it was a blessing because we had an excuse to take it all. We just took it. Mm. But on the Anthrax song, no, Anvil. Anvil, Anvil, excuse me. Another A band. <laughs> and on Anvil's song Mothra, when it hit the chorus, Mothra, it would go Moth, 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 Moth. <laughs> and we always would have to hit it, and it, the song would go on. Well, they played Mothra live, and everybody from Rock and Roll Heaven was up on the stage, and they get to that part of the song where it skips. And you saw everybody look at each other when they played through it, man. They didn't believe it. That, <laughs> it, it, actually it, actually, it actually works. <laughs> That's but awesome. that, it was a great story because everybody did look at each other and they were all listening for that skip. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so I, let's get back into the show because I know you guys right. want to promote this a lot. Um, what, uh, what made you want to do gift cards to give the money as opposed to any other idea that you might have had? Well, there was a decision made by Tony and the charity itself. It was actually easier to disperse funds that way mm -hmm. as opposed to just handing people cash where they could just go spend it on whatever. If you gave them a Home Depot gift card, then they were able to, if somebody needed a new front door, exactly. they can go get a new front door. They can go get new windows for their house. Mm -hmm. This way, it was, it, was pretty, it was a pretty good way of making sure that people were going to use the funds for what they needed yeah, the funds they, for. Exactly. Did you guys either know anybody personally or anything that was affected by the storm? I work for the town of Woolbridge. I just want to give a shout out to the road department from Woolbridge. And uh, yeah, we worked. We worked for like a month straight on that storm, 16 hours a day. And we had some devastation down in Lawrence Harbor, in New Jersey. And we're hoping we're going to get some of the money down that way. Uh, also, we're going to try to keep it uh, closer to Woolbridge if we could, because we want this is the Woolbridge scene and stuff. So, uh, but uh, it's, a lot of people got devastated. But in our area, it wasn't as bad as down down towards the shore and Union Beach. Union I'm, Beach is getting a lot of help right now, though, when yeah. I hear it. Yeah, and I've already contacted um, Owen Henry, the mayor of Oldridge, mm -hmm. and I've already sent emails and spoke with them, and they're compiling a list, which we're going to forward over to Tony Rodriguez mm -hmm. at Under My Skin, and they're going to work it out from there and disperse it accordingly. Oh, okay. And there were some people out in uh, Staten Island I told Twisted Sister we'd take care of. Mm -hmm. They're just going to put their names on the list. Mm -hmm. You know, just uh, they're very... Uh, much into seeing their own territory looked after yeah. too, at least uh, JJ. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate that all this stuff happened. I mean, even just seeing like the uh, seaside roller coaster just in the ocean like that, it's it's unbelievable. I feel like I'm watching a movie. It doesn't feel like it's real. It's crazy. Mm. But um, 
we got to start wrapping it up. Unfortunately, our hour is up. But did you guys have any shout outs? I know Ray mentioned it one before. Do you guys have any other shout outs that you want to give her any last words on the show? I got a, I'll shout out to John Albino. Tell him he's a star. Ace. Yeah. Hey, hey John. John. Hey, Johnny. <laughs> And I just want to give a shout out to all the guys, all the all the old militia guys, and and I hope you all come out that night, man. We want to see you and all the people we used to hang with, and uh, we we are excited, man. It's gonna it's gonna be happening. Come come down and live the old ladies with us that night, please. And I'd like to sh throw a shout out to everybody who's gotten on board and gotten their tickets, cause. You all make us feel so good for what we're doing. By right? the way, try to get your tickets uh, early. We only have 22 days left. The odds are they, it may be very hard to get tickets that night. Mm -hmm. Time's ticking. And I'd just like to shout out um, just two real quick. Tommy and Lisa, who made everything possible for me and Patty to do what we do with the shows. Yeah, thank you, and Tommy. especially another thank you uh, to uh, uh, Maria Ferrara and um, Ricky over at Adrenaline PR. Mm -hmm. They got the word out national and international to all the magazines and the media, and they did a fantastic job. And to all those companies that came on board to sponsor us. Like AHMC, Cheers. Under My Skin, Skateboard Marketing, Appraisal Links, Muncie. SLP Concerts, uh, General NPR. These are the people that gave us the money and funding to make this go ahead. And of course, Muncie Richie. Muncie Richie, we Skateboard love Muncie. Marketing. Muncie. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much what, for coming Dave? up. Wait, Dave's got one more. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to my friend Anthony Jankowski from Celebrate Recovery for helping so many people like me figure out how to pull it together. Right. Right. God bless. All right. All right, thank you guys so much for coming thank up. Thank you. We're thank end you. With, uh, Raven and Anvil, so keep it locked.